Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches Math. Today, we're going to be working on a couple of CGI problems. However, let's warm up first, just to get our math brains going. So let's take a look at this. We have an array of blank rows and blank columns. Well, let's see what uh, an array of three rows and eight columns equals. Well, there's different ways we can do it, but let's start out with the, the common you know, algorithm here. So we have 3 times 8, and since multiplication is quick addition, this is going to be 3 8, so 8 plus 8 plus 8. 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 8 more is 24. Now, division is quick subtraction. So if we want to have 8, find out, get back to that 8, we have to have 24 divided by 3. Well, let's take, let's draw a little bit of a visual on this though too. So we have 3 rows, 1, two, three, and eight columns. One, two, three, oh, I'm sorry, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember, we always have to count the first row here, too. Let's fill this out. So now we have three rows of eight. We can count them up. So we can say, if we know our threes, we can say three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four. Remember how we had that twenty-four divided by three? So is equal to eight. So if we have 24 and we divide it by 3, we can just see that we have one row of 8. 3 times equals 24. Let's take a look at the skip counting. This is another visual that you can use. So if we have 3 times 8, so we could say there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We can count again another 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then let's count again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. See how we arrived back at 24, no matter how we did it. Our warm up continues with Mr. Woods Teaches. So, Let's make this a little harder. This is going to be for the upper elementary, maybe even middle school. Uh, let's, we're going to deal with a different number. So we're going to look at 375, and that's going to be rows. So 375 times 15 columns. Hmm. That's a little tougher. Maybe sometimes we have to draw a visual or break it out, work out it a little bit different way. Using the standard algorithm, we have 3, 7, 5 times 15. But that's still a little tough. Let's break it down a little bit further. We can break it down to 375 times 10 plus 300 times 5 plus 70 times 5 plus 5 times 5. Let's take a look. 
10 times 375 is 3,750. You just add a zero to the end. Looking at this, it's 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 7 is 35. And 5 times 5 is 25. Let's add all this together. 3,750 plus 1,500 plus 350 plus 25. Let's take a look. 5. There's 10. I'm going to carry that over here. That's going to be 8, 9, and 7 is 16. 3 plus 2 is 5625, so 5625. 5625. And then again to reverse this, 5, 000, I'm sorry, 375 is equal to 5625 divided by 15. Let's take a look up here. What did I do? If I divided this up here by 15 and this by 15, I'm going to get 375. So how many do I have up here for this product? I have five thousands, six hundreds, two tens, and five ones. That completes our warm-up, so let's move on to CGI math. Our first CGI problem. I'm going to I'm going to keep it relatively simple because I want to have this three to five or so for the grades. Uh, so the first one, let's take a look. Let, let's let's use this number pair here, four and twelve. So Filippo made chocolate chip cookies. On the cookie sheet, he can fit four rows and twelve columns of cookies. How many cookies were on the sheet? Well, oh gosh, I'm unsure about my multiplication skills, but I can create four rows. One, two, three, four. You can make them look like cookies as well. Now I need to have 12 columns. So I start out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. Fill it out for the rest of the, the array. That's what this is. It's, it's just an array. So don't get scared. Or, you know, when you get up into upper math, it could be a matrix. But we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to call it an array of cookies. Let me get it finished here. So, again, I have four rows of 12 or I have 12 columns of 4. Let's look at that. How many are in a column? 1, 2, 3, 4. How many columns do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Huh. So I can have this as 4 times 12, okay, which is 4 times 12, this is 12, four, 4 rows of 12, and that equals, if we look at it this way, flip, if we rotate that 90 degrees, it could be 12 times 4. If we know our 4s, we can count by 4s. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, Wait a minute, how many of those did I do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Huh. So I know there's 24. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. That is equal to 48. There's many different ways to approach this problem. I want you to try your own. Download the sheet. The link is in the description. Before we move on to the second CGI problem, which is 
Cognitively Guided Instruction Map. Let's take a look at this real quick. Just a recap. So we have, it was quick and easy, four rows and 12 columns. So I have my rows, one, two, three, four, columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I showed you the math behind this. And what do we, and if you didn't catch me on this, I didn't explain what this is here. Well, this 4 times 12 is equal to 12 times 4. That's called a commutative. Commutative property of multiplication. Okay. Next problem that's coming up is another CGI problem, one that I hope you enjoy. It's a little bit different. Let's take a look. Let's read through it real quick. Kiana blew up blank balloons for her party. She put them into blank bunches with the same number of balloons in each bunch. How many balloons are in each bunch? Are there any not in an, in an equal bunch? Well, there's a lot of key information that we need to look at that. Let's start out with using this first number, and let's fill that in. So we have 35 and 8. So Kiana blew up 35 balloons for her party. She put them into 8 bunches. So that's key, but here's something else. It has with the same number of balloons in each bunch. How many balloons, so here's another one, how many balloons are in each bunch? Are there any not in an equal bunch? A lot of pieces of information here that we need to keep track of, but let's break this down real quickly. We know that there are eight bunches, so let's write that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight bunches and there's eight balloons doesn't equal 35. Let's add another column here of eight balloons. Six, seven, eight. So I have eight plus eight. What does that equal? That equals 16. Still not at that 35. Let's add another column. Hmm. 16 plus 8, or we could say 16 plus 4 is 20, and then plus another 4 is 24. We're still off. We're still not at that 35, or even close to it. But we're getting closer. Let's add another 8. So I have 8 plus 8 again, and we know that that is equal to 16. And 16 plus 16 is 32. Whoa, we're getting really close to 35, but let's count on. So we have 32, 33, 34, 35. We have all, the, all of the balloons in bunches, but we need to have the same number of balloons in each bunch. Huh. Most of these have one, two, three, four. These have one, two, three, four, five. So if we draw our line down, we have eight bunches. So we can say we have eight bunches of four balloons. And then it says, so we have same number of balloons, four balloons each, in eight bunches. Are there any not in an equal bunch? Well, yeah. We have one bunch of three balloons. That's what's left over. Or 
we use another term, it's, that's what remains, or it's, that's the remainder of the balloons. Sound familiar? Well, that's because this is actually a division problem. Using the standard algorithm, if we have 35 divided by 8, and we know that we have 8 times, if we look at this as an array, so here's 8, and this is 4, so 8 times 4 is equal to 32. So 8 times 4 is equal to 32. And then we have 3, so our, that is equal to 4 with a remainder 3. I want to see how you do these problems. If you want to, you can send me an email, Mr. Woods Teaches k8 at gmail.com. That's Mr. Woods Teaches k and then the number 8 at gmail.com. For all of these math sheets and activities, please look in the description in the video. I'll have links there where you can go out and download all of this as well as my email address if you missed it. And remember, to be a math person, all you have to be is a person that does math. Take care. Empty hearts and mouths with us